high blood pressure, heart disease, multiple long-term health problems, and even premature death. Loneliness can trigger all of these issues. As Ruth Graham discovered, being lonely actually makes our bodies feel as if we're under attack. The third daughter of famed evangelist Billy Graham was known to be gentle, quiet, and kind as a child. This Graham daughter would become no rebel or firebrand preacher's kid. She carefully put on her Sunday face and hid her personal suffering. Eventually, Ruth's pain became public through multiple divorces and crises with prodigal children. That's when she sought counsel to recover. Now a prolific best-selling author, her latest literary venture, Transforming Loneliness, sheds light on what has become one of the most crippling emotional conditions of the 21st century. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, Ruth Graham. Ruth, it's wonderful to have you with us today. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Ruth, it was a bout of loneliness after surgery that prompted you to write this book. Tell us what happened. Well, you know, most of my books are written out of experience. Um, and I had a very profound experience of loneliness after surgery. My family couldn't be with me. I had um, had had back surgery to remove a tumor from my spinal column, but then the it sprung a leak and I had to go back into surgery again. And I was uh, by myself and I was alone and nobody was there. And I realized that that's really a profound loneliness when you have no one there to connect with, no one to, to meet your needs, no one to, to really see how you are. Because we all long to feel connected. We long to feel heard, seen, noticed. And I was just all by myself. I couldn't even reach the glass of water uh, without help. So I was alone. I Obviously, the Lord was with me, and I knew that. But I wanted to connect with somebody, and there was nobody there for me. We're made to be relational with each other. You actually felt abandoned as a child. How did that make an impact on you as an adult? Well, I, I wrote extensively about that in my book, Forgiving My Father, Forgiving Myself, an invitation to the miracle of forgiveness. And I realized after many failed marriages that I had an issue of abandonment. For years, I had thought, sought security. I thought that Jesus was secure, my security. But deep down where the secrets were kept, that wasn't true. I kept finding, wanting to find security in a relationship. And uh, after the fourth divorce, I had to say, what is wrong with me? I w even wondered what, whether I was saved. But um, a friend looked at me and said, Ruth, as a little girl, you felt abandoned by your father. I did not want that to be true because I absolutely adore my father, adored him, still do. And um, he would never have hurt me in a million years. But, uh, but it was true. I felt abandoned. And that's when I, looked, I realized what my core issue was. And I think we all have a core issue. When, when we do repeated things, uh, we have a core issue. But um, I, when I recognized it, the Lord lifted the burden. And, um, and I really felt like um, God spared me the condemnation that I had been putting on myself for years, the guilt and the shame. But I realized that I was standing in Romans 1, 8, 1. There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If I felt condemned, I couldn't talk about the fact that I have four failed marriages. Yeah. Now, talk a little bit about the distinction you make between loneliness and solitude. What's the difference? Well, loneliness is a feeling we all have, and um, it's by and large temporary. Uh, it can become chronic, and as you mentioned, there are real physical uh, issues that can be dragged in with that. But loneliness is really sort of a temporary kind of thing. Solitude is something we choose to, uh, to use for a time to recalibrate, to spend time alone with God. Uh, it's a very restorative kind of thing, whereas loneliness, um, as I said, can become chronic and be become an issue. And then there's isolation. And isolation is uh, when you are completely isolated from everybody, no connection whatsoever. And that, in our society, is considered the worst possible punishment that you can have. Um, isola uh, 
a solitary confinement. Yeah. Talk a little bit about some of the things that you discovered that loneliness and certainly isolation would cause physically in our bodies. Well, we don't eat properly when we're lonely. We don't, so that causes poor nutrition, which causes lots of things. Um, <laughs> we find that we are bored. We're not stimulating our minds. Uh, we get sort of apathetic. Uh, it's just a, it's just not a good condition to be in. And lonely people have a greater uh, death rate than non-lonely people. And so we have to, and there, yet there is a shame to being lonely for some reason. And I discovered that myself when I was on an airplane and I was doing research for this book. And I thought, well, I'll read a book about loneliness. And I had a book and it had loneliness in the title. And I started to pull it out. And I thought, the man sitting next to me is going to think I'm lonely. And I don't want him to. Yeah. So I put it back in the bag. But there is sort of a sense of shame to being lonely. But I don't think we need to feel shame. I think we need to realize that so many people are just like us. Just look around in the grocery store. Look around at your church, the people who are sitting alone. A lot of people are alone and by themselves and lonely, and that's okay, but we just don't want to stay there. So the name of your book is Transforming Loneliness. How do we do that? Exactly. What do we do? We're lonely, so what do we do? I use an acronym, REACH, R-E-A-C-H. REACH is to recognize the symptoms and the source of your loneliness. E, express your loneliness. Tell someone. Tell someone that you're lonely. Tell God that you're lonely. But also you need to express it to another human being. And then anticipate that God is going to transform your loneliness. C is to connect with other people. And you can connect through uh, a book club or a small group at church or uh, exercise. I go to a gym every week, and, and that to me is, is connecting with people. So it's important to connect with other people. We need that connection. And then H is to honor God with our loneliness and say, God, I give you my loneliness. Use it for your glory and my good and give me a purpose in my loneliness. And, and we have so many illustrations in the Bible of those who were lonely and God used it for a purpose. And, yeah. um, and so grateful for those illustrations like Noah um, and all of his loneliness, 75 years it took him to build that ark. And yet his purpose was to save the world. And um, Jonah, you know, he was lonely in the belly of the fish and he was sloshing around in the, the uh, muck and juices of the stomach. But um, God gave him a purpose while he was in that, that belly. And off he went to preach the gospel to Nineveh, and they were all converted. Well, it's a wonderful word for people as they've experienced such loneliness during this pandemic. I want our viewers to know, Ruth, that your book is called Transforming Loneliness, Deepening Our Relationship with God and Others When We Feel Alone. It's available wherever books are sold. Great to have you here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. So good to hear your voice. Thank and you. Yours. Thanks.